Hi everybody, sorry Nikolai here. And so I did not know that there was a loyalist side of the end of BFA's war campaign. I saw the Alliance or the Sarfang sided, but if you were loyalist to Sylvanas, you got a special specific campaign ending. And I'm sure that a new quest line will pop up for you. Now it's a minute and a half, just under a minute and a half. A lot happens, so I'm gonna watch it, gonna react to it then apparently we're gonna have to talk about it because it's really heavy stuff so let's see what happens if you decided to remain loyal to sylvanas credit to wowhead by the way ah oh, champion i wasn't certain you made it out of ogramar if the traitors knew of your service to me they'd have put you in irons or worse sarfang's ill-considered challenge may have ended the war prematurely but it doesn't matter now Countless souls have been fed to the hungering darkness. Oh no. Though I cared nothing for the living, I did pity the forsaken for the great injustice that made them what they are. I understand the cruelty of fate better than anyone. But despite all I taught them, they stubbornly clung to hope, to life. They will learn the truth, along with all the rest. What truth is that? My bargain with Azara will yet bear fruit. The armies of Azeroth will fight her master, and he will line their streets with corpses. Oh no. In the end, he too will serve death. What? Enough reflection. There are preparations to be made. <laughs> Nothing lasts what when next you see me you will understand what wait what so i had to take a break i watched the cinematic and i had to take a long break and reflect on it because initially I did re record my initial thoughts, and they were along the lines of, well, it makes sense that, you know, she's playing 4D chess for a villain, which I like more than her playing 4D chess as a hero, which I, I'll still stand by. Now that I, I've had time to sort of reflect on it, it's, it's, my opinion's changed a little bit. Let, let's talk about up to this point. So, she talks about, she's talking about how countless souls have been fed to the hungering darkness. So, she essentially wanted the war... To kill as many people as she could. That isn't exactly clear. But she talks about she's cared nothing for the living. And she says, I, I, I kind of feel for the Forsaken about the cruel fate that was uh, thrusted upon them. You know, like, I guess what happened to her. And it, it's weird why she would want to have all this power for like death. We don't know if there's another entity involved. We don't know if... Because I was, I was talking about the bargain with Helia that she made. But it seems like... The bargain she makes isn't for power, isn't for serving. Like, I don't think she served Helia. I think that Helia gave her the lantern in exchange for something. I don't know exactly what that would be. Perhaps it was a chance to break free. Uh, I'm still wondering... Who who whispered to Vulgen? Because we still don't know. And she talks about how her bargain with Ajara. But Ajara... It seemed like Ajara and Sylvanas' bargain... Was more recent... Than it was... Let's put it this way. It wouldn't make sense if Ajara did it, because things would have to happen. Now, she isn't friends with Ajara. I know some people were saying that, well, it seems like, oh, Ajara's going to betray Nazoth. She still says Ajara's master. She's playing 4D chess, but Nazoth is playing like 12D chess. He's not going to be fooled by Sylvanas, of all people. I think, she, perhaps she thinks she can fool him, and she says, um... You know, even Nazoth will serve death, and we don't know what serving death means. 
We don't know if she wants to rival the power of an old god, if she wants to become more powerful than an old god. It seems like she wants to... Um, seems like she wants to take the powers of an old god. Rathion wants to destroy them, so maybe that there's two opposite ends of the spectrum. Hard to say. But, but Nazoth has seen everything we've done. He's known the exact path. And Ajara, I don't think, could betray Nazoth. Because she didn't betray Sargeras, even after all he did. I guess she technically did, but that's because he abandoned her. So I don't know if Ajara and her are going to have sort of the same storyline. That Ajara just wants what's best for her people. Um, it does seem like that's what she wants more, is she wants her people to be alive. So I don't see her siding with Sylvanas. She probably took Sylvanas' bargain as... Sylvanas like, yeah, I'm going to send my armies right into your hands. And thanks for whatever you did for me. And maybe perhaps it was the power of which we saw her use in Sorrowfang. But she would want her people to stay alive over being dead. Maybe. that's I could be interpreting that wrong, but... The whole, in the hour of her third death, she'll usher in her coming. And they spoke of Ajara losing her people twice. Maybe she already lost her people the third time. Maybe, yeah, they will all die. I mean, I don't know what Blizzard's endgame is. We can only speculate, right? Now, I'm going to talk about the story, and then I'm going to talk about how I felt about this whole thing as a whole at the end. But we still have a lot to get through, so I apologize if this is really long. But we still don't know who whispered to Vol'jin. Now, Rathion, in his questline, he mentions, I think it was Emperor Shao Hao, of how he was kind of brought back as a spirit because he had to lead guide his people against the fight against the Shah. It'd be curious to see who brought him back, because perhaps it was the same people, but the this void spirits that we were fighting when we were trying to figure out Vol'jin, it's like, we tried to shield you from the truth. We tried not to tell you. We still have yet to see what Amon Thule did that upset Nors Dormu. We still don't know what Amon Thule did, if that's still canon. It's it's hard to kind of guess, right? Because it could have been Nazoth, but why would Nazoth... Like, you know, Nazoth needs us to fight each other. So Nazoth or Ajara whispering to Vol'jin as a Loa... Because he was granted a vision, mind you. Like, he was shown a vision that he doesn't remember. Which is bad plot telling, right? Like, I know exact. It's like, I... And many will not understand, but I had this amazing vision. Who... What was the vision? I don't remember. Death's kind of a... You know, a... A curious thing. Which, I guess it is, but Sylvanas remembers a lot, right? She remembers exactly how she died. When she was resurrected. So possible that you know it was just it was shrouded i guess from the truth but i think it would have been cool for them to figure out right then and there what happened but it's all plot twists it's all secrecy that's all this expansion's been um what else do i have to touch on yeah i think that her bargain with helia wasn't deeper than the lantern to control the valkyr to keep herself alive she wanted immortality she doesn't have it right now it, the, even in this cinematic, it'd be cool if you saw at least a couple Valkyr. Because we haven't seen anything from the Valkyr as of late. Perhaps she doesn't have any left and she's desperate. That catches us up, I suppose. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to get through. Where can we go from here? Well, Solanus is going to attempt to submit an old god. Uh, and uh, Alex Frosby, I apologize if I said his last name correct incorrectly. He talked about how she saw Garrosh as an amateur. And I think perhaps him submitting the power of the old god made him an amateur. It could be something that she does that's a lot bigger. I don't know if they're going to kill off Sylvanas in this. See, I watched a, a video by Bellier Gaming where... He said that BlizzCon was showed Sylvanas because 
they've always shown people who's part of the next expansion, which is kind of true as of late. Not really so much in the early stages. But they have Sylvanas, therefore she could do something. And maybe she does it. Maybe she takes the power of Nazoth and she becomes a much greater threat than we could ever have asked for. And maybe she goes into the Shadowlands to try and dethrone Helia. Maybe we end up working with something. Um, that's possible. It seems like the next um, Horde Alliance war, if it happens, will come from the Alliance, not the Horde this time. There are a lot of dialogue between guards where they're split on we should have just kept going until they were all dead. I remember two guards talking and another one was like, yeah, but for how long do we have peace? The Horde's just going to do it again. So they're already splitting the alliance and how they feel about how this war ended. And I get it because it's it's hard to trust a faction that's just been betraying them over and over again. But I agree with Anduin. And some people didn't like this either, but I agree with Anduin when he said that Dalen and Arthas, we also have blood on our hands from our past. And some people said, yeah, but that's not the alliance that was well before. It wasn't the Grand Alliance, but it was the alliance. They, they had that alliance back during, I think it was the Second and Third Wars. That's still what forged us into a united front and i think that's something that people don't really realize that dalen and arthas comparing them to sylvanas and garrosh was sort of true you know dalen and garrosh were more on the we should wipe out anything that's not us sylvanas and Gar uh arthas well i guess even they're much different because arthas wanted to save his people he did everything to save his people he got corrupted by powers, and he attempted to undead the world. Sylvanas wanted to save her people, became undead, and wants to kill everything because maybe life is... Why why live? Why cut out the middleman? Just keep everything dead? So, but I, again, I'll, I just... I need to push that point home that the Alliance became great because of it. And it, it sort of relates to, you know, we can relate this to real life that countries have had rough beginnings, but it's, it's where you end up. It's after the fact of where does, did your country become better? Uh, did your faction become better? I think it was a fair, um, comparison for Anduin to give. So I agree with that. And I'm really curious to see how Horde loyalists feel about Sylvanas. I know a lot of people are pissed right now. A lot of people are pissed that she was just like, yeah, no, I just wanted, you're all nothing to me. Because you're all alive, perhaps that's what it is. But even, even then, she doesn't like the undead. Because, you know, she um, considers them as arrows in a quiver, right? I'm wondering if Nazoth's line, only I can save you from what's to come relates to Sylvanas. It's possible that it's just an old god trying to manipulate us, but I think that has deeper meaning. And it's going to be extremely curious, I'm extremely curious to see where this goes. I am curious to see who, who brought Vulgen back, if it was Azeroth. I'm wondering if we're going to nuke Nazoth off the planet with an Azerite, a massive Azerite beam. It'd be cool to nuke something. It could be really cool in game to see. But you have so much at play, and it is a shame to see Nazoth go, because it seems like Nazoth is where the story is going to end up in BFA. The last boss is going to be Nazoth. I've said it over and over again, I kind of wish he had his own expansion. I think they should have done the Horde and the Alliance. Like I believe that this should have been near kind of the end of BFA, and then going into Nazoth gripping the world and being really, really bad. But it seems like they're going for a soft reset, so they have to tie up all these storylines. So I think Sylvanas' and Nazoth storylines will probably be tied up in 8.3. Which brings me to my last and final talking point. Did this feel like an MMO to anybody else? I feel like it was a quest line, a small quest line. The cinematic was beautiful, don't get me wrong. Even the in-game cutscenes, this one and uh, Anduin talking to Saurfang were great. The CGI one was masterful. It was beautiful. You know, when Sarfang pull, pulled apart, uh, was it Sh uh, Shala Shalane? I can't say the weapon, I don't remember its name. 
when he pulled it apart and just like you know <laughs> whirlwinded her uh it was a beautiful moment and even when she said the horde is nothing i felt like he did it that us that us will be did it by odin's glorious beard he did it you know i was excited because like he showed her true colors he did what he needed to he died his honorable death i believe that was the best part about this entire quest line was he finally got his honorable death I knew it was coming. Most people knew it was coming. It was just the way it had to be. Blizzard loves their poetic justice. They did the same thing with Illidan and him becoming a warden, looking after a prisoner, as he was, for 10,000 years. And perhaps in 10,000 years, we'll see Sargeras again. Who knows? But it didn't feel big enough. I think that's, that's, that's what's griping everybody, is it didn't feel rewarding because well, if you're alliance, I don't know if Horde got the same. You blew up some rocks, you killed some infiltrators, you removed suspicious looking crates, and then all of that happened. And the alliance, you got to tell Gen, and Gen's like, I don't give a sh I don't care who's in charge. All I want is Sylvanas dead. And that's the motivation they need to go with Gen. They, if they turn Gen into, yeah, you know what, you're right, the Horde just needs to die would be out of Gen's character. Gen only cares about Sylvanas. He only wants her dead. He wants Gilneas back. He wants what's best for his people. Doesn't care about the rest. They need to stick with that, because if all of a sudden they pull him a 180 and said, you know what, yeah, I agree with whatever, just they all need to die. I guess they're going to need a couple people to be against the Alliance and the Horde War ending. Taronda's probably gone off the deep end. No one knows where she went to. But I think Kalia leading the undead would probably give them some hope because that's what the undead need now more than ever is hope. And she talks about how hope is <laughs> frailty and how nothing lasts. But if they would have given us something big to do as a group of people, let the story evolve in a massive way because they need to keep the MMO in MMORPG which it feels like this wasn't that it felt like it felt like a really great single player experience it really did and that is the problem with telling a story narratively is it's hard to do in an MMO setting but again that's why I had such an issue and a lot of people disagreed with me on this I had such an issue with Nazoth and the old gods being mixed in with this this should have been the ending of BFA we should have had so much more of the war to tell that it felt more massive. If you could let the world tell its story, you could do so much more. But what we got was great cinematics, an okay story, which it's World of Warcraft. <laughs> Their storytelling's always been kind of a little bit wonky. You know, that's the problem when you make a character who is perceived to be a hero or anti hero into a villain, the perception becomes mucked up. You could take Garrosh. Garrosh did a lot of bad things, but some people still say Garrosh did nothing wrong. You know, so, but for this, it's hard to say Sylvanas did nothing wrong. <laughs> and I, maybe that's the mistake they wanted to fix with uh, Garrosh, was if they're going to make her a villain, they got to make her go all the way. Which is a little sad to see. I, I like evil that has reasoning behind it. Because right now it just seems like Sylvanas just wants everybody dead. And it isn't 100% sure. Like, I kind of hope... My hope for Sylvanas is that they, they at least get some reasoning out of her. Especially for the people who like Sylvanas. I, I, I absolutely hate her as a as a character. I, I like it a little bit better that she's a villain. That she's not playing 4D chess. I was extremely worried that they were going to be like, Sylvanas is playing 4D chess. You guys are going to see. I'm glad that didn't happen. I think it would have cheapened the world even more than 4D chess as a villain. But I hope that in the end, she gives some reasoning as to why she decided that life just needs to go away. I can see the loyalists or the people who are loyal to the Horde getting a chance to switch if they want to. It would be really cool if they locked you into that decision. Like, no, you sided with Sylvanas. Now you have to go down that path. But it would also be 
Uh, I think it'd be a really cool game mechanic if they let you switch halfway through. Maybe they shouldn't. It would be cooler to see you locked into your decision. But I can kind of see them doing it, especially for the backlash that people are like, well, now I'm stuck with Sylvanas and I don't want to be. <laughs> I want to jump ship. But, you know, that's that's the choice you make. And the Alliance, they said they'll be probably getting choices in the future, so I'm assuming you're either going to side with Chironda if she decides to keep the war going or decide with the Grand Alliance and Anduin. But we know who's going to win in that fight, right? Because that's the one thing about showing Anduin as an old man fighting in outer space, which I think is canon. I think that is canon. It was in a comic, right, or something like that? Where they showed him as an old man and they're leading the last charge in the fight against the darkness is that he kind of has plot armor until he's an old man but maybe I, I think perhaps they should kind of use another character if they want to raise the stakes because that's what it's about right that's what blizzard seems to be doing is raising the stakes as much as possible but i hope that in the future they let this they focus on one story and let the world tell it other than them forcing us to see and we have these single player experiences. So that's the one thing I hope that they fix in the future is that let the, let the, let the world do the telling, let us interact with each other. Cause that they could have done that, this, I should say in a way that felt rewarding as a massive, massive way. They could have had the Horde and the Alliance clash or the true Horde, the Alliance and the Horde clash. They could have had for the first time ever, they could have had, like, loyalists siding with people who went with Sarfang and the Alliance members. I know it would have been a hard scale to tip, but it would have been cool if they actually threw, like, maybe, like, 10 or 5 and then 20, 20 in a battlefield and just had them clash in the, in the open battlefield and just, like, a battleground where, like, you know, like, you don't really die because you gotta heal, but at least just for, like, the last, like, two minutes and then put the dialogue that way you know the opening on Kiraj I believe was a little bit better and that was done what almost 15 years well I guess like 13 years ago that's about all I gotta say and I took the time I rambled a lot I'm really curious if you're a horde loyalist what do you feel about all this because uh I I get why people are pissed absolutely get why people are pissed uh, I get why people are upset that it felt like a single player experience. I get why I get, I get all that. Um, as far as how do I feel overall, it was better than I was dreading. I was expecting the worst. It was better than that. Uh, the best I was hoping for wasn't this at all. Actually, I, I, this actually wasn't the way I, th I thought the story was going to go at all. I didn't think that Sylvanas was just going to go all the way for the villain. And what I mean by her playing 40 chess, I guess I should have clarified that earlier was, you know, she's using the horde just to get what she wants, which is everybody to die. She still don't know exactly why, but that twist will come up later. I'm sure. Anyway, maybe she whispered to Volge. Maybe she was the one who did it. We'll have to, um, We'll have to see what happens. So that's about it. I have nothing else really to say. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know what you think. I need to know what you guys think. Please tell me what you think because I really want to gauge a community response. And I'll see you guys later.